Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a detailed look at the Bisect tool. So this is a tool that's in Blender as standard, but it just doesn't really get used enough, and I'm as guilty as anyone of this, I often use the wrong tool for a job where the Bisect tool would be better. For example, if I go to any edit mode and decide I want to cut off, let's say, a corner of this, I'll press K to get a knife tool, click, go there, C to cut through, click, space to confirm it, there we go, and then I'll select that vertex, delete it with X, and then do something like select those, and then press F, and we've got that done. This is entirely the wrong way to do this. I mean, it works, it's one of the ways you could do it, but it's definitely not very time efficient. Instead, what you should be using is the bisect tool, and this is actually found with the knife tool. If I come down to where the knife tool is, we can see this icon that makes sense for what the knife tool is. We also have an option if we click to do the bisect, and that gives a very nice image of what the bisect tool does, so you can probably guess what's gonna happen already. All I'm gonna do is click and drag, let go, and then in this instance, I want to clear the outer there, and I want to fill it. There we go, and we've got that done. Much easier, much more efficient. Let's have a quick look at this tool and what all the different options do. So let's come back out of this. So first thing that we need to understand is that this will only work on faces that are selected. So I often find this easier to go into face mode. For example, say we select here and here, I've got the bisect tool activated so I can just click, drag, go there. And in this instance, it hasn't cut all the way through. So these options will suddenly cause well, issues and strange results. So we probably don't want to do that. What I generally recommend doing instead is just hitting A to select everything and then using the tool. So let's have a look at some of these options. Firstly, you will notice that we get this icon here. Uh, it often appears off to the side, it has a direction to it and it has this blue circle. We'll come back to that in a second, but I'm gonna jump around these options in a slightly odd way and just cover these boxes first. So clear outer means that we clear everything that's in the direction of this yellow arrow. So in this instance, we cleared everything that's on the corner of this cube. If we go the other way around, we get clear inner, and that does everything that's in the opposite direction to the arrow. Fill, will fill in the gap that's left, so we can go between those and we get that nicely filled in so we don't have to do it manually. Interestingly, you can also click everything and you get a cross section through your shape which can actually be quite useful for certain things to have that perfect cross section, but obviously we've lost the rest of the object. Okay, with that covered, let's have a look at the options at the top. So this shows us what's called the plane point and the plane normal. Effectively, this is controlling where our cut or our bisect is. Effectively, this yellow circle here tells us where that plane is and the blue circle tells the rotation. So we can move this yellow part around and that will move it side to side or we could rotate it with the blue part so we can change the direction. With that, we've got quite a nice level of control, which is pretty good. Now, the way to think of this is like that the yellow circle is, well, a plane. If we just come out of this and shift A and bring in a plane and then let's scale it up and rotate it round, we're sort of saying that there is a plane somewhere here. This is gonna be annoying to get exactly right. That's pretty close. That is cutting our object. And that is what the bisect tool is using. Let's just come back and do that again. So we can also control this without using the icon, using the options here. For example, I quite like moving the plane point to the origin, and then we can just start from there. But again, this will just work by, if I move the X, it will move it in the X direction. Y will move it in the Y direction, though in here that's very similar, if we have a look. So the Y direction is moving it in this direction along the Y axis, the X direction is moving it in the X direction along the X axis. We can see the X axis in the colors here, and then the Z axis will move it up or down so we can control it this way. Now, the direction of this is a little bit more complicated. It's done as a normal, so between minus one and one, though in most instances you only need between zero and one. If we select, let's say, the X and Y and put these to zero, we end up with a Z that is perfectly on the Z axis, and it doesn't matter how much we change this as long as it's between zero and one. And that means that it's now perfectly horizontal, and again, we could move this along the Z axis to get a cut, which is really nice. 
But what we can do is say that we want to involve the others as well. And this becomes effectively a ratio. So let's say we wanted it to be at a 45 degree angle. I could turn my Y up to one as well. And we now get a 45 degree angle between the Y and the Z plane. So effectively 45 degrees across the X. We could take that Y instead go to minus one and do the 45 degrees the other way. Now, What's interesting here is because this is done as a ratio, if I put this as minus 0.5, it's now, well, half the amount. But if I put the Z as 0.5 as well, it goes back to 45 degrees because as a ratio, they're still equal. So we just need to bear that in mind. I generally find it easiest to put one of them up to one and then just manipulate the other one the amount I want. For example, if we come to the side here, at the moment, we've got this at 45 degrees, so we've got basically 90 degrees versus 90 degrees fighting against each other. But we could just rotate this round to, let's say, minus 0.5, and now this would be, well, half 45 degrees, so 22 and a half. This can be a little bit annoying to play around with, but it is something that does, in theory, work. I think I'd probably rather have this as degrees, but I guess mathematically there's probably a reason for this. Now, the last thing that I wanted to cover is this box at the bottom, which is the axis threshold. Let's just move this slightly off centered and then let's rotate this round to here. In fact, let's do that and that, and we'll move this more on the Y. So this axis threshold is effectively saying snapping. Okay, it says, if we put it over it, preserve the existing geometry along the cut plane, but you can just think of this as snapping. If we imagine here we're getting a vertex at this point and a vertex at this point, this point, and this point, what this will do is this will snap. Let's actually manipulate these a bit more, so we'll go there. What this will do is snap to any nearby vertices. For example, these two vertices, which we can imagine here, are relatively close to each other. So if I start scrolling this up, eventually we'll get to the point where this is going to snap. There we go. So that is now snapping there, but it isn't snapping on the other ones. The next closest, well, actually, these two are fairly close. So let's just keep bringing that up. Eventually, we'll get to the point where one of those, there we go, that one is going to snap as well. So this helps us to control our point by meaning that it snaps to any nearby geometry. For example, if we wanted to, we could say, oh, okay, I definitely want to connect to that corner here, but... I want it going somewhere down here. So I could just use the bisect tool. Let's just come into X view. Let's go into vertex mode. So I want it connecting to these, but not down here. So I could just A, select everything, use the bisect tool, come to, let's say there, and then up this till it joins to those points and then fill clear outer. So we get quite a nice bit of control over this. The other thing that we can do when we're doing this is if we draw this, press control, and that will activate this snapping, which is at five degree increments, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I'm gonna call that five degree increments. So you've got that other option there if you wanted to do this at a perfect angle. So there we go. That is the bisect tool. So hopefully you found that useful. If you think the video is worthy, hit that like button. It helps other people see it. And if you want to get these videos a week ahead of time and ad free, there's a link in the description to the Patreon. And any support there is massively appreciated. It's the patrons that give me the time to make these videos and edit them to be able to put them up. Have a great day, guys.